So during my last video, I sort of complained about how Warzone's been getting more treatment than multiplayer. And there's a lot of comments on that video saying that a lot of you share the same complaint that I do, which is awesome to hear. But a lot of people might be wondering what's with all this hate against Warzone, and why don't people just accept that it's more popular? Well, there's a pretty simple reason as to why people are frustrated with Warzone getting seemingly more support and more care than the traditional 6v6 multiplayer. And it has nothing to do with 6v6 multiplayer having seniority or being around longer. At least, that's not the reason it bothers me, and I think a lot of people will agree that just because something's existed for a long time, that doesn't mean it's better or deserves priority. That's not how it works when it comes to products. So no, the real issue is that Warzone is free. Warzone is a free-to-enter version of Modern Warfare where you can play Battle Royale, and I believe Plunder, and any other side mode that they add to Warzone. So Warzone Rumble would be a part of that. I know a lot of people that enjoyed Warzone Rumble were people that don't have the traditional multiplayer and ground war or gunfight or anything like that, so Warzone Rumble was a fun change of pace to the free-to-play players. And let me just say that I think it's great that Warzone is free-to-play. I like that Call of Duty now has a free-to-play battle royale that is going to be cross-gen, it's going to be cross-title, meaning that the next Call of Duty game, Black Ops Cold War, is going to have Warzone as its battle royale. Warzone will just be the persistent battle royale, meaning Call of Duty developers don't have to worry about creating and supporting a new battle royale every title. That'd be quite the undertaking. So I'm really glad that there is a cross-title, cross-gen, cross-platform battle royale that Call of Duty has made with all of the polish that goes into Call of Duty. And yes, I know we like to complain, but Call of Duty is a very polished console and PC experience when it comes to shooters. It's not perfect, nothing is, but it is very good. Anyway, it's cool that that is free for everybody. But you see, that's also the problem. It's free. It's free to play. Meaning, to play Warzone, you did not have to pay in to the experience. And when people bought Call of Duty Modern Warfare, with the promises from Activision that post-launch content will be free and not locked behind any sort of paywall or RNG wall, no, they were going to give us content for free for the rest of Modern Warfare's life cycle. So that was the promise we were told. Now, Battle Royale was not a promise. It was heavily hinted to, it was leaked, it was teased, but it was not, it was not promised when you went to drop $60 on Modern Warfare last October. This is what I believe causes a lot of the tension between fans of 6v6 multiplayer ground war and gunfight, and Spec Ops for that matter, and Warzone, Battle Royale, Plunder, and anything else under the name Warzone. When I bought Modern Warfare, I was looking forward to realism, yet it took months for realism to be a permanent mosh pit, and I'm so happy that it is, but it's a mosh pit. It still doesn't have its own browser like Hardcore has, but okay, fair enough. I was expecting more night experiences. Modern Warfare nails night combat. My friends and I have tons of fun playing on the night maps, but we do get bored because they haven't added any new ones. One of my buddies is, for some reason, a fan of Spec Ops. Now, regardless of whether or not that means he was dropped on his head is neither here nor there. The point is, is he spent his money on Call of Duty Modern Warfare, and he was excited to play multiplayer and Spec Ops with friends. And yet Spec Ops has seen little to no support, except now with variant sort of difficulty modifiers, which are a nice touch, but still, Spec Ops has sort of been left out to dry. Same with Night Mode, and realism never got fully, for lack of a better term, realized. And even Ground War seems sort of slapped together as just chunks of the Warzone map converted into a 64-player Battlefield-style conquest mode, which would be cool, but the maps never feel very special because you've already played on them if you've played Spec Ops or Warzone. And in my opinion, they don't feel very balanced because of this as well. Maybe they're not supposed to, maybe they're supposed to feel a little bit more natural, a little less video gamey, but I don't know. I don't enjoy Ground War because of this. It sort of feels like it became the scraps that Warzone and Spec Ops left behind. When a publisher promises support and content throughout the year, and you buy into that, you're buying not only the product, but the service that comes with it. It is a games as service sort of system, and it's the best we've had in Call of Duty. Really, it is. You don't have to spend $50 on a season pass. You don't have to buy a Black Ops pass. Really, the only thing you have to do if you want to for extra cosmetics is buy the battle pass. Everything else is 100% free, and that is fantastic for everybody. And the fact that we all get it on the same day, 
also fantastic. This is the way I want Call of Duty to progress throughout the future. Have a free-to-play Battle Royale game that gets consistent updates that is run by its own group of developers. Multiplayer maps and weapons should be completely free and easy to obtain. Maps being instantly obtainable, obviously, just by downloading the update. And the only thing they can charge you for is cosmetics, and then it's up to them to keep those cosmetics themed. And even though some of Modern Warfare's cosmetics are a little shark jumpy, they're way more tame than what we've seen in recent Call of Duty games. Even COD World War II, I think, went a little too far with its aesthetics. So before I continue this, just know that I understand that Modern Warfare's post-launch content is some of the best, if not the best, I've ever seen from a AAA developer. It's fucking breathtaking how well they're handling it. And that might sound super gay and dramatic, but just think about how Call of Duty was previously. Think about Battlefield before Battlefield 5. Think about Rainbow Six Siege. Think about those paywalls and high grinding walls that players had to scale in order to stay with their friends. But by staying with their friends by purchasing DLC, they do sort of ostracize themselves from other players that are not willing to spend more than the $60 they already spent. So paid DLC and high grinding walls are very, very ridiculous, especially when they directly affect gameplay experience and variety. But when I purchased Modern Warfare, I was sort of promised a service. And then, later down the line, they add Warzone. And Warzone, being a massive success, gets a lot of support. But the service that I actually bought into, because I did not buy Modern Warfare for Battle Royale, I've seen some people say that they did buy Modern Warfare for Battle Royale at launch, at the game's launch, and that's a little ridiculous, because at launch, it wasn't even confirmed, so you bought it based on leaks and rumors. But I purchased Modern Warfare based on what was included in the base product, inside what Modern Warfare was promising from launch day, that is what I purchased the game for. So I bought into a service that I feel like is lacking a lot of love, and the people that didn't buy in, in my opinion, are getting way more substantial things relative to the content they're capable of playing. Now, you also see some people saying we should go back to paid DLC. And I used to criticize this because, you know, what the hell do you mean you want paid DLC? You want the player bases split up? You want there to be just horrible matchmaking times after the game's life cycle? Like, you know, paid DLC is not cool in a lot of ways when it comes to giving out maps and whatever. But now I sort of realize what they mean. They don't miss paid DLC for all of the negative attributes. They miss getting a chunk of content that is specific to the reason they spent $60 on that game. Back during Black Ops 2, when I bought a DLC, I got a zombies map to play with my friends, and I got four multiplayer maps. And you are way more likely to enjoy a map out of four than one out of two. I've seen a lot of people saying that with Season 5, they don't like Oil Rig or Harbor. And I can't blame them. I dislike them and like them for various reasons, but for the most part I'm indifferent and almost already bored of them. They're not gimmicky, they're not nostalgic, there's no weird little thing on them, it's kind of boring. And if you're a gunfight fan, then I guess you might enjoy getting livestock, but then you look over and you see the massive events going on in Warzone and how Warzone is being used to tease the next Call of Duty game. You see how the stadium has now been opened up and is now a play space. You see that they've added a train that adds a new dynamic dynamic into the Warzone play space. You see that, and you might think as a 6v6 player, damn, I wish we got substantial things like that. Because relative to Warzone, that's an incredible amount of content and new things to do. It changes up the entire experience of Battle Royale having those things, which is great for a Battle Royale player. Of course, that's my outside perspective. You might have a different one, and go ahead and sound off in the comments if you do. But when it comes to multiplayer, getting two maps is pretty lackluster. And if you're a Ground War fan, getting another chunk of a Warzone map that you've already probably played on Warzone or on Spec Ops at any given time, you know, that's a, uh, okay, cool, thanks, I guess. And then when you get to Gunfight, you get one new map, which is fair. Gunfight has a lot of maps already, and that game mode's really not about variety, it's about gunfights, and so, fair enough, I don't think gunfight fans are too upset about just getting livestock as their map, but 6v6 used to get much more substantial chunks of content. The, the trade-off was that we had to pay for them, and people got sectioned out because they didn't buy certain DLC packs. So to wrap up this video that's gone on a little longer than I wanted, I don't want the return of paid DLC, but I want the return of substantial content for the service that I paid into. No offense to Warzone players, but the reason you might not understand some of our disdain is because you didn't have to spend money for a service that sort of didn't deliver. It's delivering, but there are certain things that were advertised 
that were not capitalized on, and that's disappointing to see. Spec Ops and Night Maps are the best examples I can come up with right now, but let me know what you can think of that wasn't delivered from the trailers and launch material to the current state of the game about 10 months later. And when I say $60 to get in, I know that Spec Ops and Campaign are substantial enough, plus multiplayer, to warrant a $60 price tag. I, I totally agree. But a paywall is a paywall, an entry fee is an entry fee. And I believe that down the line that should be more respected by Activision, but we'll have to see what happens with COD 2020, Black Ops Cold War. I'm very excited for that game because at least they won't have to be developing a new Battle Royale along with their game, so hopefully there will be more time put into campaign, multiplayer, and zombies, because we all know that's going to be happening. So anyway, I'll see you when I see you guys, goodbye.